Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to finish our discussion on gas laws with the ideal gas law. Today's essential question, what is the relationship between the four variables affecting gas behavior? The ideal gas law. There are four variables that can affect the behavior of gases. The three we've talked about so far, which are volume, pressure, and temperature, and the variable we've not yet discussed, which is number of moles. The ideal gas law combines the other gas laws into one equation that gives the relationship between pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles. And this is the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Now I just told you there are four variables and they're um, written here are five letters. That's because R is not a variable, it's a constant. Okay? So here we go. R is a constant. We have two different versions of R here. We have R equals 8.314 liters kPa mole K, and we have R equals 0 0.821 liters ATM mole K. So how would you decide which R to use? Well, what's different about the two? The pressure. So you look at the pressure units to decide which R to use. Notice as well that the volume units are liters. Okay, right here, liters. That means when you're doing the ideal gas law, you, the volume needs to be in liters. So when do you use the ideal gas law? You use the ideal gas law when you know three of the variables describing the gaseous state, pressure, volume, moles, and temperature. By the way, N stands for moles, um, it's number of moles. That's it for how to do ideal gas law. What we're gonna do now is actually solve some problems. Let's try this practice problem. Calculate the volume of one mole of gaseous CO2 at STP. All right, so we're going to be using the formula PV equals NRT. Start by making a list of our variables. So we have pressure, volume, N for number of moles, R is our constant, and T for temperature. So as we read through the story, we have calculate the volume, so volume is our x, of 1.00 mole, that's our n, of CO2 gas at STP. STP stands for standard temperature, which is 273K, and standard pressure, which is 1 atm. Next, we got to figure out which R to use. Remember, to, to, to decide which R to use, we look at the pressure unit. And our pressure unit is ATM. So we will be using that R. Fill that in. We'll have zero point, guess we should keep the color steam in this game. We have 0 0.0821 liters ATM mole K. All right. Now, just fill, the, fill this in. We have pressure times volume equals number of moles times RR 0 0.0821 liters ATM mole K times temperature. First thing I would do is cross out any units that we can cross out. So we have moles crossing out moles and K crossing out K. And from here, we'll go ahead and multiply. So we're going to have 1 ATM X equals 
22.4133 liters ATM. And then to get x by itself, we'll just divide both sides by 1 ATM. So we have, as a final answer, 22.4133 liters. So the last step is to look at sig figs. So if we go back to our original problem, we have three sig figs here. And that's actually the only thing we're going to be using for sig figs, so three sig figs. So the very final answer would be 22.4 liters. So that's how you use the ideal gas law. Okay, let's try another problem. If you think you can do it, go ahead and hit pause and try to do it on your own. Again, we're using the formula PV equals NRT. And let's make a list of the variables. So we've got 500 grams. I don't see mass there, so let's skip that for now. Becomes a gas at room temperature. Calculate the pressure, and they tell us they want it in kPa. So pressures are x. If 127-120 milliliters of the gas is produced at 25 degrees Celsius. All right, so before we move on, we've got a couple problems here. The first being milliliters. We cannot have milliliters as our volume because it won't cross out our um, constant units, the R units. So we're going to instead move the decimal three times. And instead of having a volume in milliliters, we'll have 1.2, 127.120 liters. We also need to change our temperature by adding 273 to get, get to get to Kelvin. So our temperature should be 298 Kelvin. So we're not going to use that. We're not going to use that. Next, let's figure out our, the R we're going to use. And it tells us specifically we want KPA. So we'll be using the R. 8.314 liters kPa, mole K. So we'll fill that in, 8.314 liters kPa over mole K. All right, so we have everything except for our number of moles. They do, however, give us mass of carbon dioxide, so we can figure out the number of moles using our factor label methods. We can have 500 grams of CO2 equals X mole of CO2. So we'll start with our known. 500 grams CO2 over one. And then we can use the equality, one mole CO2 equals the molar mass of CO2, which is 44.01 grams, so we'll put that on the bottom, 44.01 grams CO2. In the top, we'll go one mole CO2. Those cross out. So our, the number of moles of CO2 that we have is 11.4 mole when you take into account sig figs. So we'll put that in our, in our list, 11.4 mole. All right, now we're ready to start the problem. So we're going to have pressure times volume equals number of moles times our R. times our temperature. Let's cross out any units that we can cross out. 
can cross out moles and we can cross out K. So now we have 127.12 liters times X equals 28244.3208 um, liters KPA. And now to solve for X, we'll divide 127.12 liters on both sides. Liters cross out. And that gives us 222.186, et cetera, KPA. Mm. Let's try that one more time. 222.186, et cetera, KPA. So I'm going to go back and look at sig figs. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 sig figs, 3 sig figs, and 2 sig figs. So our final answer is going to have 2 sig figs, so 220 kPa. There you go. All right, that's it for today, and that's the last lecture in gas laws. Have a good one.